Hello, everybody. Welcome to the game plan. Uh, this episode is about the Oakland Raiders versus the Houston Texans. If you're new to the program, just a quick uh, you know rundown of what it is. I'm going to look at the injury report. I'm going to look at the key stats. I'm going to look at the gambler stats. I'll predict the game plan, which historically I've been pretty good on. And then um, I'll give you the daily fantasy and fantasy football uh, projections for each player in this game, each key player in this game, which again, historically I've been pretty good at. Uh, if you want any of the projections, if you want the full list of projections, I give those away for free. Just follow me on Twitter or email me. You see the graphic below. Uh, and then before we get rolling in the show here, if you can give me two more seconds, just give me two clicks, um, hit the like, hit the subscribe. Believe it or not, YouTube, uh, to be a YouTube partner, you have to get to a certain level. And once you get to that level, it actually unlocks features that would improve our production content. So we're really eager to improve that production content and be that YouTube partner. So if you can help us out, I actually think it'll be well worth everybody's while. But let's just jump in that right now. We have Oakland again against uh, Houston. The first thing I like to do is compare the injury report. And you can see uh, in the graphic uh, displayed right here, we have Arden Key, Jalen Richard, Josh Jacobs, uh, although Josh Jacobs has come out and he's already said he's going to play. Uh, Rodney Hudson, Terrell Williams, and uh, Trent, Tr Terrell Williams, I should say, and Trent Brown, all questionable. Brown and Hudson are a concern for me because Oakland needs to run the ball, but we'll get into that in a bit. Now the Texans, you got Jonathan Joseph, uh, Philip Gaines just went on the IR. Will Fuller is doubtful with another freaking hamstring injury. Uh, Bradley Roby, Deshaun Gibson, um, and uh, Roderick Johnson. So neither one of these teams are super healthy. I actually think that uh, in terms of health, they even out. If you watched my San Francisco versus Carolina video, uh, Carolina had like this many people and San Francisco had a laundry list. It was nuts. Uh, but this one, you know, it, it sucks to be injured, but you're in the middle of the season. People are going to be banged up. I don't think the injuries really favor or give either team an advantage. Next thing I always do when I'm making my picks, and again, just to let everybody know, uh, I grew up a Redskins fan. Dan Snyder has ruined that joy for me. I don't root for any team, including the Redskins now. I don't have any bias. The only thing I care about is hitting my bets and winning my fantasy football matchups and my daily fantasy. So I come into this, I'm not, I, I look at this kind of like a computer. I try to take my emotion out of it and really analyze the game of what I think is going to happen. And that's what I'm doing for everybody out there today. Uh, but if you look at the Raiders and the Texans, and I like to compare, uh, you know, pass offense versus pass defense, uh, you know, run offense versus run defense. And you can see the ranks right there. So the pass offense for the Raiders uh, is 15th versus the 29th pass defense for the Texans. Conversely, the pass offense for the Texans is 11th and the the Raiders are second to last at 31st. Then you look at the run offenses and defenses. Um, you know, the run offenses for both teams are actually pretty good, and the run defenses for both teams are pretty good. So you kind of have a wash there. Um, schematically, you kind of have a wash in both sides too. And so I started looking at, you know, which quarterback, which coaching scheme do I like more? I like Gruden's scheme a little bit more, and actually I may as well just take this over into the gambling stats. A spoiler alert for when we get over to the uh, to the game. You know, I do like uh, Deshaun Watson quite a bit this week. Uh, but let's look at the yards per play, okay? So the offensive yards per play for the Raiders, only five. Or I'm sorry, oh, uh, it's six. Six is good. For some reason, uh, I thought it was five there. But it is six. That's really nice. Against the Texans, uh, 5.7 yards per play. If you average those two out... Um, you just make a, a very quick composite there. Um, you're looking at basically 5.85 5 yards per play for the Raiders. Now, if you uh, do the same for the Texans, uh, the Raiders give up 6.3. The uh, Texans uh, gain 6.2. So you're looking at basically 6.2.5 um, or 6.25. So again, you know, the, the Texans are averaging a net of each play of about four tenths of a yard per game uh, comparatively. So that favors the Texans. You look at third down conversions. Um, the Oakland offense is 50%, but the tight, uh, the Texans are at 46%. Conversely, uh, the, the, Ra or the Raiders are at 48% given up. And the Texans are at 48%. So schematically, you like in terms of performance, third down conversion, I would say it's a wash. You look at the fourth down conversion, uh, I would say that that really favors the Raiders. So again, if you're looking at game plan, the Raiders need to be aggressive on fourth down to extend some of these drives. Uh, then you look at the red zone. I would say that uh, the Texans defense giving up six, uh, touchdowns in the red zone 68% of the time. That's no bueno. Uh, for the Raiders, scoring 56% of the time, that's pretty damn good. Um, credit to the uh, the offensive play calling there from uh, Mr. Gruden. Uh, then you look at the uh, the other side. 
<laughs> Houston's at 65% touchdown scoring in the red zone, which is nuts. Um, credit to Sean Watson and, and O'Brien there, Coach O'Brien. And the Raiders aren't great there on the red zone. So if I'm looking at that, um, I think both teams will be able to score touchdowns in the red zone, but I favor uh, the Houston Texans there. And Raiders fans, yes, I did watch Derek Carr give two turnovers in the end zone. That does uh, skew the uh, the stats there. Then you look at turnover margin, a big thing. You know, who's dealing with possessions throughout the game? Well, the Raiders are at negative 0.5, and uh, basically the Texans are breaking even. So, you know, the Oakland needs to do a better job taking care of the ball, and Derek Carr on the freaking goal line. Um, how about this? Uh, we'll, we'll just move it to the game plan. Um, first thing, I said this last week for the Raiders against the uh, the Green Bay Packers, too. And I got to say, you know, I, I kind of hit the game plan <laughs> on the nose if you watch that video. Uh, but the thing was, you know, I picked uh, the Oakland Raiders to cover that game. And to me, the big uh, the big difference was Derek Carr. Those two turnovers, you know, those were 20. That was 28 points a swing there. Green Bay scored on both of those turnovers. Oakland should have scored 14 points. 28-point swing, that's the cover. But uh, turn the field goals into touchdowns, uh, especially with the Raiders being as good as they are on fourth down and the Texans not being great about getting teams off the field on fourth down. Go for it. Um, if you're at, at fourth and five, you know, fourth and goal from the five-yard line, go for it. Uh, I think the Texans need to – I'm sorry, I think the Raiders need to put up points to uh, to fight the Texans this week and try to win this game, not only cover the spread but win the game. Uh, number two, Josh Jacobs. Uh, he's banged up, but he needs to – Oakland needs to establish their run. That's – how they do it. They the lifeblood of this offense is the running game and hitting tight ends. That's it. It's Foster Moreau, it's uh, Darren Waller, obviously, and Josh Jacobs. They need to get going. Josh Jacobs needs to get going. But you know, Oakland isn't going to. It, Oakland's going to be patient with the run. And I think a lot of teams with the running attack they move away from it too quickly during a game. You know, the run game. If you can be patient and take those two to three to three and a half yard chunks early in the game, it's not what you want. You want five yard, four or five yard runs. But if you can be patient and keep leaning on that defensive line, it helps. And Oakland is one of the few teams in the NFL that will continue to lean on the defensive line and take those chunk yardage later. But the key for Oakland is they have to keep the game relatively close in the meantime to continue doing that. Uh, Houston is bad in the passing defense. Oakland's a little banged up at wide receiver. There's still some question marks. Uh, basically, Terrell Williams, I hope he plays this week. Um, you know, he's somebody they can get. But Derek Carr is going to have to hit a couple of deep passes this game, uh, whether it's like a Trevor Davis, whether it's Harris or some of the, you know, some of these guys, whether it's Zay Jones being being, um, you know, reintroduced in, or introduced into the off, whatever the case is, uh, they need to hit him deep. Um, number four, Derek, come on, man, hold on to the ball. If you're extended for the pylon, hold on to the ball. You shouldn't really do it, honestly. It was a, it was a poor play, but it was a competitor play, so you can't get too upset about it. But um, you know, those are the, those. The NFL, the margins are so slim, especially if you're looking at it this from a gambler's point of view. It's so slim. As soon as he fumbled that ball out of the pylon, I knew I lost the bet, and uh, and then he added another turnover later. It's kind of a bummer. Um, bummer for me anyway, probably good for uh, Green Bay Packers fans. Uh, last one, uh, Trevor Davis, uh, Keelan Doss, somebody. They need another receiver, assuming Trevor, um, um, I'm sorry, Terrell Williams plays. They need another receiver uh, to, to go off in this game because Houston is going to score. Let's take it over to Houston. This game is Taylor made for Deshaun Watson and, by the way, DeAndre Hopkins, my second point there. Uh, Oakland's pass defense is struggling. This is such a great game. If Will Fuller was playing, he's not. If Will Fuller was playing, this would be a great matchup for him. This would be like a daily fantasy darling type day for Will Fuller. Um, but Kenny Stills is stepping in, and he's um, very good as well. I don't know that Kenny Stills gets in the end zone, uh, but let's go. just go to point number three. Make Oakland one-dimensional. you got to stop the run. I just mentioned how, how key the Oakland running game is. I don't think the Houston Texans running game is as key. I think he can let Watson do, the, do his thing. You don't need to worry about establishing the run. For Oakland, it's imperative. So... You know, the Texans, rotate your defensive line out, keep those guys fresh, stop the run, do anything you can to limit Josh Jacobs. Hopefully he can get out to a 14 to 21 point lead early and uh, you know, and you're off from there. Uh, I do think, like I said, this game favors the Texans in the matchup. Um, now, Ben, don't break defense. Oakland has, um, they were doing okay in, in, in terms of uh, converting red zone opportunities into touchdowns, just not as good as, uh, as Houston has been. So I would say, you know, Ben Don't Break will work for Houston, play a patient game, let Deshaun Watson trust him to do his thing, keep passing even if he throws some interceptions. And then once again, Oakland, it's a winnable game. 
It's not likely. Um, I would say if I gave it a percent chance, maybe 35% chance that Oakland can win this game. In terms of covering the spread, I'd say it's maybe 45 to 50%. Honestly, I think the spread is interesting. Um, but Houston, man, they, they need to figure something out in the passing game because Houston's just going to throw the ball all day. Deshaun Watson is fantastic. Definitely an MVP candidate. Um, you know, Houston coming off that loss to Indianapolis last, last week. Oakland coming off that loss against Green Bay. Both teams are going to want this game. I think both teams are good. Uh, the NFL uh, community still thinks a little bit lower of the, uh, the Oakland Raiders and I think actually Houston's starting to be devalued a little bit because they took their third loss but both teams I think are very competitive I think both teams will be in it for a long time Houston I think will make the playoffs Oakland I think they're probably still a year away from that but uh, very interesting game let me get over to the daily fantasy or fantasy football projections for those not familiar, RoccoBot is a, it, he's not a real robot. He's just a computer program I wrote. Um, this does not, these are not my rankings. This is really just the analytics. Like I said, people that follow me in daily fantasy and fantasy football, they win more games than not. So if you disagree with them, again, I mean, you know, I don't really care about that. I'm right more right than, than I'm wrong, and I'm comfortable. I'm not going to hit 100%, and I'm not saying I'm going to, but let's just move it on. Uh, Derek Carr, I, I think, has a decent game. He's kind of like a, a lower fringe start for me, just because this Houston Texans uh, defense will give him some opportunities. Deshaun Watson, I, he's my number one quarterback of the week, and I think he, uh, he should be in everybody's lineup. And, uh, I, you know, I don't know that I would buy him in daily fantasy just because quarterbacks are so commoditized, but... Uh, you know, Deshaun uh, Watson, I think, in this game is going to have a great game. Uh, you look at the running backs, I think Josh Jacobs has a nice game. I think Oakland will be, um, you know, patient. I'm just worried about that shoulder, uh, but we'll see how that goes. Jalen, Jalen Richard, um, I think he's questionable. Uh, four points a game, I don't love it. Uh, Carlos Hyde, don't love it. Duke Johnson, I like quite a bit more. I, I think this is going to be passing day. I think Duke Johnson out of the backfield is probably the better of the running backs there. Um, receivers, you got Williams, uh, Davis Renfro. Um, I didn't mention Harris. There are a couple other guys that are going to rotate in for Oakland. I love Tyrell Williams this week if he's healthy enough to play. I really do. If not, somebody else has to step up. Um, for uh, Houston, I like, honestly, I like all these receivers for Houston. Love DeAndre Hopkins. Kenny Stills, I think, will get a lot of catches and yards. Don't know if he'll get in the end zone. Kiki QT, I'm not sure out of the slot. I think this is a nice way to attack the Oakland Raiders defense. Um, he's a touchdown candidate for me. Uh, so if you're in a touchdown only league, you know, he's somebody, if you're really desperate, you could pick up, uh, but I don't love him in daily fantasy. Um, he, you know, he could be a lower line, uh, uh, flex, um, start, but I think you can find better value elsewhere. Uh, Darren Waller at tight end. I don't mention, um, you know, the second tight end, but Foster Moreau is pretty damn good too. Um, Darren Wall. I always get confused. There's a Fabian Moreau or Foster Moreau in Washington. So there's two Moreaus. So I apologize if I'm getting that wrong. Pretty sure it's Foster though. Uh, Darren Waller though, I think is going to have a great game. Uh, 15.92. Darren Fells, I think is a, is an intermediate start. Um, again, if you're on a bye week or dealing with injury, I said this last week too, and Fells laid an egg. So like I said, I'm not right hundred percent of the time, but Fells should have a nice matchup against Oakland's defense. Um, and again, it's a pass first uh, attack this week for Houston, so I think that'll be exploited. Oakland's defense, I don't like it. Houston is just too explosive this week for me to play uh, Oakland in any format. And then I don't love the the Texans defense this particular week. I think that um, Oakland will be able to run the ball against this really, really strong team. Um, if I had to predict a final score at this point, I would say maybe maybe 27-21 Houston, um, which at the beginning of the week would be an Oakland cover. Oakland plus seven would make that 28-27 Oakland. Uh, but uh, yeah, an interesting game. I'm going to have it on one of my TVs. I love watching both of these teams play. Respect to Gruden, respect to the Raiders, um, and respect to Deshaun Watson and what he's doing uh, in Houston this season. So uh, that takes me through. I think this is the last episode of this week. If you want to see more episodes, we did Philly Buffalo. We did um, San Francisco Carolina, and then we did, what was the third one? Oh, Arizona, New Orleans. Orleans. Um, if we continue to have a favorable response, I'll continue rolling more of these guys out. Once again, if you want free stuff, just uh, email me, functionalsportsaholic at gmail.com or follow me on Twitter. I'm at TFS underscore Sean. That's S-E-A-N. And uh, we'll catch you on another episode. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week.